There were no fireworks in Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman's maiden budget. Yet, the budget did contain some ideas and proposals that could lay the foundation for India to become a $5 trillion economy in the next few years. So, what are the key takeaways of the budget? Coming in the backdrop of slowing economic growth and falling consumption and muted job growth, there are expectations of handouts and tax cuts in the budget. Now, that hasn't really happened. There is not much in the way of tax incentives for the middle class. Yes, the super rich have to pay more taxes. Just like the economic survey, the budget also sees private investment as a key driver of economic growth, jobs, exports, and in general, macroeconomic stability. The budget tries to provide an enabling environment for investment to increase, besides offering SOPs in sectors such as affordable housing. So overall, the overarching theme seems to be an increase in investment. So what are these steps? Well, for one, the budget tries to lower the cost of finance. It has taken several little steps here. For example, there is a bank recapitalization of Rs 70,000 crore. The budget has tried to unclog the NBFC sector with short-term booster shots uh, as well as structural changes. Among the short-term measures, there are, uh, for example, a one-time uh, six-month partial credit guarantee scheme to PSU banks that want to buy NBFC assets. The budget also does away with the debenture redemption reserve requirement for NBFCs that want to raise public money. This will add to the confidence of the NBFC sector. Moreover, uh, it has uh, strengthened the hand of the Reserve Bank of India in regulating NBFCs. It has also brought housing finance companies under the banking regulator's ambit. This will increase confidence in the sector. For instance, the Reserve Bank of India can now supersede uh, the, the, the board of an NBFC. It can debar auditors. These are all, all good steps uh, you know, for the NBFC sector. Secondly, the government has projected a fiscal deficit of 3.3% of GDP. It has also said it will borrow an external currency. How will this help? This will relieve the pressure in the domestic bond market. Private investment will not be crowded out because of excessive government borrowing. It will also instill some discipline on the part of the government because foreign borrowers will have a significant say now. Third, the government has also extended the lower corporate tax rate of 25% to 99.3% of all companies. It has taken other little steps like an interest subvention for MSME loans. It wants to amalgamate the maze of complex labor laws into four new labor codes. These all are significant in terms of the ease of doing business and could provide a boost to private investment. Fourthly, in the affordable housing sector also, the government has uh, taken a steps. This, is, this will also go towards fulfilling its, its uh, elect electoral promises. It has increased tax breaks. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the interest, uh, the exemption for uh, interest has been uh, uh, increased to 3.5 lakh of, uh, from around 2 lakh earlier. It has said PSU land could be used for affordable housing. So these are important steps which will boost investment in affordable housing also. So these are all good. So what's the hiccup? Well, for one, revenue projections look very optimistic. For instance, uh, net tax revenues are expected to grow 25%. Now, when the whole budget is uh, uh, is expecting that GDP growth uh, will be around 11% uh, in the current financial year, then expecting net tax revenues to grow by 25% is, is way optimistic. Secondly, if the fiscal deficit target is not met, it could crowd out private investment. There is also the danger that credit offtake might not go up despite the government taking all of these steps. And thirdly, if consumption growth, growth in general stays low, businessmen might be reluctant to invest and the budget will not meet its objective. So that's the budget in a nutshell for you.